I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. This is HCAM TV's program, not only about businesses, but more importantly about the people who manage and run those businesses uh, in and around Hopkinton. And happy to have um, Nicole St. Pierre, who is the uh, director of uh, corporate communications for Pro Sports MVP, Entertainment and Promotions. Big title, big title. Big Big, big, deal. big big day for a company and a big deal. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Um, Want to spend a little a, a little bit of time talking about your background sure. and how it fits into the work that you're doing. Talk a little bit about that work. Talk about some of the interesting people you work with, and then some of the interesting experiences you have. Because I understand you've done a little traveling with the uh, with the company. Uh, I have, yeah, some adventures. So tell me a little bit about your background. Not, not necessarily, by the way, the day you were born, but. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I professionally then went to UMass Amherst. My um, major was marketing. Um, always been a huge sports fan. My dad, when we were little, we always had on the Celtics, the Red Sox, the Bruins, and especially the Patriots. And back in those days, as we all know, they were not the uh, fantastic force they are now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they wouldn't sell out the game. So he would go up on the roof and screw around with the antenna and do the bunny <laughs> ears and all that. We'd listen to it on the radio, watch it through snow. But um, so that really kind of, I think, was the beginning of my real interest in sports when I was a kid. Um, so ultimately, to be able to combine marketing and sports um, and entertainment was um, something that I was really fortunate to do. And um, I really fell into it. Um, I literally found the company in the yellow pages. I had followed a boy out to Colorado and um, was looking for a job out there and looked under marketing. I mean, this was 15, almost 15 years ago. So I looked in the, the yellow pages, found them, called. They said, come in for an inter uh, informational interview. They weren't really hiring. Um, so I went in. The place was kind of a mess. It looked like they needed somebody, and I let them know that. So um, they hired me part time, and ever since then, um, I obviously kind of worked my way in, and I've been there for uh, 14 years. Last month was my anniversary. What? Well, where's the company located? They're actually located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, I moved back to Massachusetts in 2009 with my now husband, who is from New Hampshire, and. Um, and open sort of my own remote office here. You know, I, the, how did you, you're giving up living in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to move back. That, that had to be a, a, a difficult decision. It, it was in a way, and in a way it wasn't. Um, it's a great, gorgeous place. I mean, we lived in Colorado Springs, Pikes Peak. I, and one thing about the place, you always know what direction you're going because <laughs> you always know where's west. So, that, uh. yeah, you never get lost over there. Um, but we, you know, enjoyed ourselves. I had a great time, spent most of my 20s there skiing and having a phenomenal young time. Um, but um, when got a little older, know that, we're going to have a family and stuff, and all my family is, is here. Um, and I can't imagine raising my kids without mom and dad and brother and sister-in-law and in-laws all around. So oh, I understand. Made sense for I, us. Have a, I have a son and daughter-in-law and a four-month-old granddaughter who live in Breckenridge. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's, yeah. Uh, That's it's, heaven on earth. It really is. Yeah. But it's a challenge. Yeah. But it, I, I understand. Yeah. T tell me a little bit about the company. Oh. Uh, in a nutshell, I, I didn't actually know what we really did for the first month or two that I worked there. I just was thrown into it trying to figure out, okay, so. Um, we more or less um, secure athletes, celebrities, and speakers for events and engagements. Um, oftentimes, we work directly with the talent, the athlete, whoever it is that um, we're, we're getting for autograph sessions, keynote speeches, fundraisers. Um, any type of promotions, we do a lot with like minor league baseball, they throw out the first pitch, do announcing, sign autographs, that sort of stuff. So, yeah. um, so a lot of times we work with those folks directly. Sometimes, you know, in, in, in cases of real huge name folks, we have to go through an office or an agent, but have built some pretty good relationships with some of the major agencies and the credibility that we sort of bring kind of helps our clients and we're able to negotiate and provide pretty full service 
Is, is, uh, is, your, is the challenge of your job made greater by the fact that the company is headquartered in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and yet you're here? Not at all. I mean, it, it doesn't present any challenge. Um, most of our clients are based, you know, in, in totally different parts of the country, sometimes the world. So um, it really doesn't present much of a challenge. I used to kind of have a more different role. I, I really managed the office and did a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. But since I've really segued out of that, um, really concentrating more on sales and, you know, event um, management and trying to get new clients to to kind of utilize our services and, and book the people that we work with. So I would expect that, uh, that the company has uh, a, a fair amount of com competitors that are probably pretty big. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's Washington Speakers Bureau, there's Creative Artists Agency, WME, I mean, huge agencies out there. But what we, I think, bring to the table is that we kind of tap into all of them and have our own relationships directly with, you know, athletes and speakers. Um, so, you know, we, we just have kind of a bigger offering. It's not that we're trying to shove a set of clients down somebody's throat and say, this one will work. We take what they are looking for, budget, date, location, you know, um, what's your theme and topic? What do you want them to speak on or, or, or do while they're there? And, um, you know, really customize some recommendations and give them their options with pricing and all that kind of stuff so they have something to choose so, from. So you have relationships with athletes and in, in, in celebrities, but you must also have to develop a network with nonprofits, corporations? Sure. Uh, nonprofits is one of the major um, sort of um, type of organizations that I deal with. I do a ton with uh, Boy Scouts of America. I've booked probably, I don't know, 100, 150 speakers for about 25, 30 different councils across the country. So, you know, once I sort of got a, a name for myself within the organization, they all know each other. They have conferences yeah. and they, they talk to each other quite a lot. So I've been recommended, you know, oh, she does a good job and that sort of stuff. So. Um, and Boys and Girls Clubs of America, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Um, so yeah, those are some of the organizations that I do a lot of work with. And it's awesome because, you know, while you, you got to keep the lights on, you got to make money at the same time, yeah, I get to go to a lot of the events and just see the kids and the supporters and yeah. hear some of the stories. And it's like, oh, we're actually kind of doing a good thing too. So, oh, that's yeah. great. That's yeah, great. That's good. Some of the personnel as you've dealt with, that must be kind of an interesting part of your business. Everybody thought it was crazy to take Dak Prescott in my fantasy football league as early as I did. But <laughs> I love the guy. I've met him a couple of times, and, and um, he's the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys um, the starter. He's having a heck of a year, um, and he's, he's, he's proven me right. Um, but he, he was one of the, one of the best people that I've worked with um, just has his stuff together for like a 23, 24 year old kid. Um, great story, great background. Um, so there's him. Um, so I've worked with Rob Ninkovich from the Patriots. First rate guy, I understand. Really, really quality dude. Um, I, I always blank when people ask me to talk about some of the people that I've worked with. Um, Joe Theismann, I actually just secured him for a Boy Scouts event. He was a Life Scout, in fact, one, one level below Eagle Scout, maybe a little known fact. Um, Jackie joyner Kersey, uh, really? Olympian. Yep. She's actually, and she was a member of the Boys and Girls Club growing up, so she, she does a lot for that organization. Um, Phyllis Bezito, a Bruins favorite. He's uh, just what you'd expect, rough around the edges, but sweet, softy. Do, do, do you end up uh, coaching? Uh, some of the speakers that you deal with, some of the people that you place in events? Most of them are pros and they don't necessarily need my direction or input. Um, there was one, Jenny Finch, she was a pitcher for the USA Softball. She actually, I booked her for her first ever speaking engagement and she, she repeated herself a ton. So I, you know, after she asked for honest feedback and I gave some to her. But that's, I think, the only instance. Of course, you know, I'll let them know a lot about the organization and try to, you know, make sure that their message is on point with what the client is looking for. But um, 
the, most of these guys do it for a living or, and girls and, and they're pros. Do you end up, how about the, 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 the client side? Do you, do you work with, I'm sure the Boy Scouts have plenty of professional people, but do you have to work on the, on the nonprofit side to get people to understand what the potential is for bringing somebody like this in? Uh, at times, yeah, I do, you know, and, and some folks, they don't understand how much it costs, and they, they don't necessarily understand that if you make this investment, a lot of times it really will put butts in the seats, and you can charge more. Um, you get what you pay for, and, um, you know, we, we just, we try to do our best to make the right fit for the organization because obviously if it's a small town you're not pulling from these huge markets like right. the big cities do so your ticket sales and stuff like that are going to be limited so we always you know do try to really lead people in the right direction and get them the right fit for them that's going to make the most sense and the most um, you know justify their their cost and increase their investment so the power of celebrity is uh, is really important isn't it in what I do, for sure, absolutely. And, and sometimes it's really that name recognition. Um, we need a big name. And sometimes with, you know, different scouting councils and stuff, they really just want a, a person with um, a, a particular background. You know, they want them to be an Eagle Scout or something like that. So, um, you know, it, it, it is. It's all very much dependent on what the client is looking for and being able to listen and um, not just say, well, I've got somebody great without really understanding what they want. Um, you know, you're missing the boat. So I think the, 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 the blend of working with the client and then the nonprofit's an interesting part of your job, I would think. You're, you're sort of in the middle of that. Yeah, absolutely. The, you said you've uh, done some traveling with the clients. Any interesting? I have. Any I mean, you know, I've been to podunk places over in the Midwest and tiny little towns where some of my retail stores were located. Um, you know, of course, the West Coast, East Coast. I've um, traveled a little bit in Europe. Our company does a lot of Goodwill military tours. Um, so we bring celebrities, athletes, and, um, you know, those kinds of folks um, over to visit the troops and to entertain. We've done some comedy shows and concerts. Um, but the coolest destination I think I'd have to stay was um, Afghanistan. Wow. So I accompanied um, a couple of, uh, a model and, and an actor um, over there for a Goodwill visit. Um, got to shoot some pretty big guns and... Um, ride some pretty cool apparatus, C-130s and Black Hawk helicopters and, and that sort of stuff, which was super cool for me in particular because my husband um, served five years in the military and so many of our friends are also military wow. personnel. So to really be able to have that experience and see how you know, troops live while they're deployed. Um, we ate with them, you know, and our VIP sleeping quarters was, you know, just these little wooden hut kind of things but it was like the lap of luxury for for anybody there so it was it was quite an experience did you did you, did you feel safe when you were doing this uh very much so there was only one time where we went outside the wire um which outside you know wire. Was out yeah out, outside of the perimeter of gotcha. the base it was bagram air base in um in in afghanistan so we um they wanted to take us to the shooting range, and we were kind of jazzed up for it. So we were like, heck yeah, we'll go. And we were put in tanks and driven off. And that was the only time we were ever outside of a base if we weren't in the air on a helicopter, a Chinook, a Blackhawk, or whatever. So um, driving out there for like the two-mile ride, it was, I was, you know, a little bit nervous. But we were reassured that it was entirely safe. We, there were mountains all around, so if there was, you know, at any... IEDs or something like that. You, you would have, you would have seen. Did that. you did did you walk away with a different view of um, people who are in the service? I had such a good idea uh, about um, how they're how they live over there um, and what's expected of them. Um, but sure, when you do go through a fourteen day period where um, you are beside them kind of living their life, sure. But we're not the ones that are going off on missions. Um, we, we had it easy. Uh, it, was, it was just office visits and tours and funds and fun and looking at different equipments. And 
yeah. that kind of thing. But um, so y y I don't think you can completely get it unless you're actually, like I said, outside the wire. Yeah, doing I've, what had, you do. uh, I've had I've uh, had an experience at uh, the Marine Corps base at Quantico. Yeah. Uh, Often their shooting range and that sort of thing, and it, it, it gives you a very, very different view mm -hmm. and an, a greater understanding of what it takes to do what they do on a day to day basis in the practice. Oh, absolutely. That they go They're pros. Yeah, they, they really are. are. Good point. That's a very good way to describe that. How about uh, work with any Yankees? Uh, That's the New York Yankees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, Bucky Dent. It's oh. one of them. I know he's not the most popular man in this area here, but um, he's he's actually a really good, really good guy. <laughs> well, you know, um, I hate to say this, but uh, I was born in Connecticut, born and raised in Connecticut. Oh, in okay. The middle of the that, state. So yeah. yeah, just on the border was the center of the state, and you could go either way. But I happen to be a Yankee fan. Wow. But we don't talk right. a lot about that. Apparently we do, and on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch yourself. <laughs> I know. It's, how, about, how, about, how about some of the other experiences with, uh, you've, de de uh, you've dealt with Mankovich and others in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. What kind of impact do they have uh, on, on audiences? Uh, Must be kind of a kick to watch that. Absolutely. And uh, I actually did an event with Jermaine Wiggins. He's a former tight end, and he's now a radio host. Um, but he was a Boys and Girls Club kid, and he spoke at an event in Haverhill. And, oh, man, he was fantastic. He just really engaged. And there was a table of kids there. And he pointed you know, out to them and said, you know, you guys, you, you are the future. You can do, you know, whatever you want to do. Look at me. I was a kid growing up in the Boys and Girls Club just like you. And just the way, I mean, I have, don't have the chops that he does, but just the way that he presented it, it was really profound. But obviously dropping Tom Brady's name and that sort of stuff and the ring. And so, yeah, I mean, the, people get all geeked out about it. It's, right. it's kind of fun to watch. I've seen grown men cry and kids throw up on themselves and the whole gamut when they get to meet their, uh, their, <laughs> idols, their yeah. yeah, their, their favorite, uh, sports stars. How do you about now? You have a family. I do. How many? Can you tell I'm excited about that? Yeah, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I that's have. A, that's a good thing, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All my boys, my, um, my husband is Wilson and our two boys are Emmett, who will be five on New Year's Eve and Truman, who's turning three this month, so. How do you balance the, the, the I'm, I'm more and more intrigued. It's, I don't know what, when I was younger, I didn't think about this. Why would you? <laughs> you I, didn't have to. But I think about it, I think about it now, particularly it relates to young families. Mm -hmm. How do you balance uh, the work life uh, the, the goals and objectives that you have in, have in your life? That's gotta be a challenge. It's, it's definitely, you know, tricky at some, at some points, um, but, my husband's fantastic. He steps in and, and, and steps up when needed. Um, and we make a good team when it comes to kind of, uh, you do this and I'll do this and all that kind of thing. And I got to be honest, working from home makes life a little bit easier. I have, you know, a, a nice home office that I, that I can work from. So um, the kids go to daycare Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I take them all day on Wednesdays. Um, when I was coming back from maternity leave, I couldn't imagine have, not having like that time with my kiddos. So I, um, I take Wednesdays with them and uh, my mother and father watch them on Fridays at my house along with my niece and nephew. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, wow. so it's, uh, it's a nice mix because they, you know, have the socialization of the school and, you know, have little friends there and all that stuff. Um, but... Um, like I said, it, it's such an advantage to be able to work from home because you just can, you know, if they're ever sick, you can kind of deal with it and all that stuff. So I often think, you know, I don't know how other folks do it when they don't have that advantage. You know, I guess that's why I uh, asked the question because mm -hmm. um, I hear more and more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, and it's got to be, stuff. talk about adding stress. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to add stress uh, to one's life to be able to, uh, to work in that. It seems like you've worked it out. How did you, how did you end up in Hopkinton? Um, again, going back to Wilson, my husband, he really canvassed like anywhere from an hour from Boston when, when we were looking for a new home. We were living in Roslindale, 
a nice little subsection oh, of Boston. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. And uh, we decided, you know, that we wanted to move a little bit further from the city, have a little more space and a, a good spot to raise a family. So he had obvious, he's, he's got spreadsheets and he's one of these guys. He works for <laughs> Fidelity, so he's really um, sort of analytical. But um, so he looked at school systems and his commute and all that sort of stuff and had some different communities in mind that he would, you know, go and, and uh, look at houses. And I had just had my son, so usually he'd kind of go and do that on his own. Um, and he found a wonderful house over on Huckleberry Road. And we happened to be going to Western Mass and we're all able to stop by. My son was about five months old. And um, we walked into the room that is now his room that we knew probably would be his room. And he just went, ah, <gasps> I mean, like, you know, five month olds don't have that much, right, like, right. you know, going on. But he just, like, lit up. and. The house was beautiful. When we drove in to Huckleberry Road, it was like a Disney set. Everybody's outside playing with their kids, and it was like, <laughs> did they stage this for us? Uh -huh. It was, uh, it was just idyllic. So, um, and we just loved it here, and took a ride around and said, I think this is a good spot for us. I'd never been to Hopkinton before. He travels in the Boston every day. He does. He takes the train. Oh, okay, so, smart. That's yeah. a, that's. Uh, that train is going to come. Be, gonna, that train route is going to become more and more valuable as. Uh, Hopefully, it becomes uh, more reliable. <laughs> well, we, oh we, my. It, it's going to become more important. I don't know, but we, they're working on the reliable yeah, part of yeah. it. Yeah, let's hope so. And so, so your sense in the community are you that? Because I, I guess what I'm really interested in is how people. Again, I use the word balance. How they balance all of this, how they work in their work life, how they. You know, I understand now how he did his research. That's great. Love to know the other towns we were compared against, but we, <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. And, and, and it's this balance that we don't overlook. We deal with people in terms of their jobs, and mm -hmm. that's sort of it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more to this mm -hmm. than, uh, than just what somebody does on a day-to-day -day basis. Do, have you plugged into activities in the community? What's your sense about all of that? Do you, do you, do you see Hopkins as a vibrant community? Absolutely. I mean, the more I become involved, the more I see how, how many other people are really involved. Um, I'm part of the Hopkinton Moms group. I really haven't done a ton um, with that group. I was in a play group with some ladies for sure. a while, but then the older ones started going to kindergarten and just kind of, you know, lost touch. But, um, you know, we're, we're still in a little group text and email and keep in touch because a lot of our kiddos are going to be going to school together next year. Um, my youngest heading off to kindergarten. So, um, and uh, I've just become involved with the Chamber of Commerce a few months ago on the events committee and, you know, Good. trying to Good. help out a little bit with uh, some of those events. So if, if, um, if I were to put you in front of a, a, a class of Hopkinton High School seniors, who are thinking about uh, not just school, but their careers, mm -hmm. what would you tell them about the kind of work that you do in the industry that you're in? Uh, I would, I think one of the biggest challenges that's going to be coming up, a lot of the folks that we work with are retired. Their salaries weren't anywhere near the kind of you know, money that these oh. people are getting. Um, so I feel like it's going to become a lot more challenging in the coming years to, you know, garner interest from athletes and, you know, celebrities, those kinds of folks, in order to get them involved in, in these appearances, either with nonprofits, because, and so many of them go on and, and establish their own foundations as well. So yes, yeah. that's, you know, become a really big thing in the last 15 years or so because um, you didn't see that so much, but almost every major athlete has their own foundations and aren't you know, necessarily willing to contribute to other nonprofits and causes because they're so tied up with the things they do, which is great, but at the same time, you know, for kind of um, what we do in facilitating those kinds of relationships, it, it, I, I feel like it's going to be a lot more difficult in the coming years. Well, interesting. Interesting. And if people were, if, if there were st these students interested in your line of work, how, what would you suggest to them in terms of uh, their studies? Uh, intern. 
as much as possible. I mean, uh, well, as point. it relates to their, their studies, you know, m most certainly marketing, sports marketing, sports management is, yeah. is or entertainment marketing um, is definitely something that they would really want to focus on. But um, really getting out there, making relationships and connections. And, you know, if you got to suck it up and, and work for free for a while, and get the donuts and the coffee and whatever the heck it is that's you know needed. Wow. Um, that's that's I feel like is the best way to get your foot in the door in this kind of industry. You know that's really good practical advice. I think you're right. I think you're right about that. <laughs> uh, not not enough people are are willing to do that. Um, and sometimes you know financially they're just not able to unfortunately. Right. So, um, but if it is an option, um, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, I appreciate uh, not just uh, your thoughts on the, on the business that you're in, the industry that you're in, but also um, being clear about why you're happy you happen to live in Hopkinton and, and a little insight into how you balance work uh, in, uh, in your home life and family life. Uh, not everybody's willing to do that, and I appreciate it. And our time's up. For All right. now. And um, again, thanks for taking the time. Uh, Nicole St. Pierre, uh, new to Hopkinton, uh, successful in the sports marketing business, and in a, a great addition to Hopkinton. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. security officer called to tell me there was a drinking party on campus. The officer said there had been excessive drinking and our son was in the hospital for alcohol poisoning. He said my husband and I should come as soon as we could. I knew my son would face distractions and temptations when he went away to school. He already had unfortunate experiences with alcohol and he was a little too good at fitting in with the crowd. I had no idea things could get so much worse so fast. A nurse suggested we attend Al-Anon family groups, even though our son claimed his drinking was no big deal. He said he was not an alcoholic and that he could quit whenever he wanted. I didn't want to go to an Al-Anon meeting, but I'm sure glad I went. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. Watching my mom and dad age is hard. I worry about their financial decisions. I don't know where to turn for advice. For resources, tools, and self-directed courses, visit smartaboutmoney.org, a non-commercial organization focused on your financial success.